Joe's gonna come out smoking, but I ain't gonna be joking. I'll be pecking and a poking, pouring water on his smoking. This might shock and amaze you, but this time I retired Joe Frazier. And retire him he did. The famous Thrilla and Manila fight ended after Frazier's trainer stopped the fight following the 14th round, giving Ali a technical knockout. Ali was on a roll again. But his greatest athletic comeback was in Kinshasa, in what was then Zaire. Only last week, I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. Ali knocked out the heavily favored young champion, George Foreman. It was called the Rumble in the Jungle. His last fight in 1981 would mark the beginning of another battle that Ali described as his toughest. The diagnosis that he was afflicted with Parkinson's disease. After two decades of redefining the heavyweight division, Ali was forced to retire. His lifetime record, 56 victories, just five defeats. But he never retreated from living a very public life. In 1996, Ali provided one of the most poignant moments in sports history. With three billion people watching, he lit the Olympic flame at the Summer Games in Atlanta. His hands trembling, but never wavering. Ali remained the consummate showman. As his condition grew progressively worse, Ali struggled each day to whisper a word. His hands and legs shook, and his voice quivered. I am the greatest. Yet his spirit was never shaken, and he never slowed down from serving as an ambassador for peace and a mediator in world conflicts. In 2005, Ali was presented with the Presidential Medal of Freedom Award, the nation's highest civilian honor. When you say the greatest of all time is in the room, everyone knows who you mean. And tributes for the champ continue. How do you feel about getting getting the honor tonight? <laughs> Ali was one of the most gifted and unique personalities in sports history. The world may never see the likes of him again. In the final chapter, few would argue that Ali needed the crowds as much as they needed him. Not for mere validation. <laughs> but because each saw in the other the best in themselves. Ali's got a left, Ali's got a right. If he hits you once, you'll sleep for the night. And as you lie on the floor while the valve counts ten, hope and pray that you never meet me again. Muhammad Ali was so much of a citizen of the world, grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, spent his final moments at a hospital in Scotts, Dale, Arizona. He was surrounded by close friends and family, and that is where we find our Dan Simon live this morning. Dan, are you learning anything more about Muhammad Ali's final moments? Well, hi, Joe. Details at this point are thin. We do know that he was brought to the hospital on Thursday with what was described as a respiratory issue, which is common in patients uh, who have advanced Parkinson's. And at first, we were led to believe that this was going to be a brief hospital stay, according to the family spokesperson, that he was in fair condition. So I think the speed at which this all occurred may have caught a lot of people off guard. Of course, uh, he died here at the hospital uh, last night, and uh, he was surrounded by friends and family, as you said, Joe. He's been to the hospital before over the recent years and made it out okay. That is part of the surprise this morning, isn't it? That's right. Of course, he had been in failing health, uh, but this really was not expected. You know, he had pulled out, if you will, uh, each time he had been to the hospital. Uh, he had been in and out over the years. The last time he was seen in public was back in April at a, at a charity event, and he was frail, but, but he was getting around. Um, and so, you know, him coming to the hospital, I think, you know, was a big surprise to many.